Hello everyone, welcome to Orko. Orko is a Bangla word and it means sun. In Orko, what we are trying to do is try to create a platform where expatriate Bangladeshis can come and share their stories. Today I have Tanzim, who is doing his bachelor's in civil engineering in University of Houston. And what he did great in his university, University of Houston, he created a student awareness on International Mother Language Day, which is February 21st. And he was the major force behind creating that awareness in his university. So we would like to hear the story from himself. Uh, Tanzim. See, first of all, I want to just say thank you for the platform that you guys are giving to let everybody else know what we are doing outside of Bangladesh to promote the Bangladeshi culture. Uh, to begin things with, Ekesh February or International Mother Language Day, it is a celebration beyond Bangladesh. It doesn't only have to be, you know, concealed in Bangladesh. So when I first became a senator at large in our University of Houston Student Government Association, I wanted to create a new tradition on campus that will indicate the diversity that we have on campus. The University of Houston currently is the second uh, most diverse school or institute in America. So I wanted to promote something that culture cannot live without, which is language. And International Mother Language Day is, a, is of course, a United Nations recognized language day. So when I first brought in the idea to the student government, when I showed it to them, they were amazed that they didn't know about it beforehand. And the more people I talked about about it, they, they, were, they all went, wow, how come we know about this wonderful, uh, wonderful awareness day? So it was around January when I actually did the final draft of the legislation and I presented it to uh, in front of student government to make it a recognized student um, awareness day at the University of Houston. And it passed with flying colors. Nobody opposed it. And it was an indication that America as a whole is willing to move forward to participate in more international um, cultural festivals because everyday America is changing, is progressing, more people are coming in. And language is a essential part of that. And instead of everybody trying to learn one language, it's way more beautiful if we all get together and you know learn about more culture. Can you, can you tell us how you established it and what was the basis of doing it in your university? Okay, so um, the basis of it was that University of Houston is a very diverse school, and we wanted to let everybody know that language is the basic of any culture. Without language, there is no culture. Um, I did talk a little bit about the student factor as far as the Ekish February Day goes, how in, um, in February 21st or 20th, more like, 1952, in Bangladesh, all the politicians and the activists, they were scared of the Pakistani army, they were scared of what can happen to them. But students of, you know, University of Dhaka did not back down that day. They focused more on the future, more on the beauty of language, the mother language that we talk about. They, that's where the concentration was. And they fought for it. They fought for something they believed in. And one of the things that I talked about when presenting the legislation is, sim is the simple fact that it was beyond just one thing. It wasn't only language, it was also the love of culture. It was also oppression that they were fighting. They were not only fighting one thing. Um, as there are so many battles going, on, going around the world, they can all get something out of this that whenever students step up and believe in something and want to make a difference, it doesn't have to be politicians. It can be a regular student with a belief in their heart that they can do something for their culture and for their country. Currently, what we're trying to do is make it a tradition on campus to host an event every year around uh, February 21st. And one of the things we did last year and also this year is that we invited all other student organizations, cultural student organizations on campus. And we want to make this a cultural festival where students of all culture can come gather around and speak in their own language and dance in their own language and have fun in their own language because that is the whole point and it's quite a show when 
you know, you have somebody who knows multiple languages getting up in the stage and singing different songs and the whole crowd is behind them. Um, as a host or uh, MC last year, I was on the side looking um, and I remember this one girl, she sang in two different languages. Uh, I believe it was Hindi and Malayalam. And both the times the whole crowd was behind her, even people who had no idea what either one of those languages. Um, just seeing that, and I was just standing, I was like, wow, she's just singing in a totally different language that most of the crowd doesn't understand. Yet a lot of them were on their feet, clapping and cheering her on. Um, it just goes to show that if we are willing to broaden our horizon a little bit, we can achieve beautiful things. And we are really hoping that it becomes a tradition at University of Houston where you know, people from other, not only universities, but other states and maybe even other country, if we ever get that big, where they can come and enjoy the show because we are willing to put on a show that will let everybody know that what a beautiful cause can do. So Tanzi, I have this question. For the time being, I have known you. I've always seen that you always talk about branding Bangladesh and stuff like that. My question is, why do you want to brand Bangladesh? Well, I would like to begin by saying that Bangladesh is a very small country in the global map, literally, not figuratively, but literally. Um, most of the times when people ask, hey, are you from India? It's very easy for us to say yes, because that will make everything really easy. But the thing is, Bangladesh is a beautiful country. Yes, we have corruption, pollution, politics, this and that, but which country doesn't? And a lot of times we just take the easy way out by saying that, oh, we are, you know, South Asian or Indian. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, India or any other countries in South Asia, but we are Bangladeshi. And for us to let people know the beauty of Bangladesh, I think it is a responsibility. It doesn't matter where we are. Even if you're a Bangladesh and somebody saying something bad about Bangladesh, we should point them out, hey, don't be a part of complaining, be part of the solution or be part of something that is a little bit bigger than you because every time we complain it's because there's something we don't like but there are things that we do like about Bangladesh and we often don't let people know that um, I mean personally I can start with the food yes it's not the healthiest food in the world but every country has their you know bunch of unhealthy food but we can always talk about the mischiefs that we have we can always talk about you know, grammar by pita that we have. We can always explain those to people. Uh, we can always, always, and always talk about the beautiful sharis that we have and the beautiful pontifes that we have. Uh, we don't always have to wear suits and tie to look good. We can wear, you know, something as simple as something from Grammy Czech that I'm wearing right now, actually. Uh, but, you know, we have people like Dr. Yunus uh, doing beautiful things for our country. We have players like Sakibul Hassan, you know, who constantly is the number one all-rounder in the world. We can always tell people about those things. Um, quite often people ask, why did I leave Bangladesh? And yes, it's of course better opportunity here in America, Canada, or Europe, which is very true. But at the end of the day, I'm not American. I'm also Bangladeshi. And yes, it's, it's easier to you know move on after not being somewhere for a long time, but Forgetting what your country is about is not a very good excuse to how good things about you know about your motherland. So, and other than that, you can always always talk about your experience for Bangladesh because every now and then people do miss the country, people do miss the things we did. We can always share those stories with other people. We don't only have to share the bad ones or the sad ones. I totally agree. And that's what we are also trying to uh, achieve through this platform. Um, I'm really glad, Tanzim, that you shared your story with us. At your age, what you have done is really, really amazing. I just wanted to say it was a pleasure talking with you guys. And it's amazing what you guys are actually doing. Um, I'm just a small part of what you guys are doing. And if, if there is you know, any way, shape or form I can help, please let me know because these are the kind of things that any Bangladeshi wants to see. Even if they don't know about it, they still want to see it. So the fact that you guys have taken this initiative, you know, I look up to you guys and I thank you 
for the hard work that you guys are putting in behind the scenes. So this is Tanzim's story and uh, we can see that even though he came at a very early age to the US, the effort he is giving in doing something which will make Bangladesh or Bangladesh is proud is really appreciable. Um, so today we sign out. If you have a similar kind of story or any kind of story you would like to share with us, just uh, let us know. And we hope that Arco becomes the light for Bangladeshis. Thank you.